It's now over to Sanjay Pinto for the big question on corporal punishment and more on the news tonight. Thank you, Evelyn. Well, this is a tragic story of a young life cut short. A second year polytechnic student in Bilupuram succumbed to injuries after his teacher allegedly hit him. Now, the student was first asked a question which the boy answered, but then after this, the boy apparently was dragged out of the class. These are versions coming out from the students, of course, and was beaten. A previous enmity between the two seems to have triggered the attack. Now, the victim was rushed to a hospital after the fatal blow from the teacher that was declared dead on arrival, and the police are currently investigating the cause of death. Post-mortem report also, we are told, is yet to come out. But joining us live in our studio is Anu George, who's the legal director of the International Justice Mission, somebody who's been dealing with children and in various forms of exploitation. Thank you very much, Anu, for coming. Also joining us uh, from our studio on the Hindu is Mrs. Annie Mohan, who is the principal of Vidyodhya School. It's important to get that important stakeholder on the discussion as well as uh, the, the Inspector General of Police North Zone, Mr. Sailendra Babu. I said earlier, it was under his jurisdiction that that incident took place, as well as Henry Trefain, who is the Executive Director and the founder of People's Watch. This is, of course, corporal punishment, as we know, is a big human rights violation. Uh, but first to Mr. Sailendra Babu, sir. Now, what does your preliminary investigation really reveal? Why did the teacher attack the student and what was the provocation? Our investigation reveals that the boy has not done his homework. Therefore, uh, the teacher got upset over this and he has, um, I mean, he has slapped the boy first, then pushed him down in the fit of anger. And with that, the boy developed uh, fits and he subsequently was taken to the hospital where he died. All right, that's shocking. Uh, if I can go across to Mrs. Annie Mohan. Uh, Ma'am, thank you very much for joining us. Not doing your homework. Do you really need to beat uh, a grown-up boy of 16 for not doing homework? Good evening, Sanjay. And my first response to that is it's really shocking. A teacher who is supposed to be a person who can exert authority and control without any physical force, brutal force, or any abusive, verbal abusive language, uh, when this has happened, it's, uh, my only response is it's terribly shocking. And uh, uh, I am very sure that there are more methods make children do the homework and methods which, has, which have got worked out very well in the uh, schools which uh, we are dealing with All right, school uh, kids. Uh, anu, George, uh, every time something like this happens, we have uh, studio discussions on television, there are newspaper editorials that are written, and of course we are shocked. But we do nothing about it. You're somebody who's dealt with this issue extensively, exploitation of children, cruelty to children. You've also been in theatre. Uh, what goes through your mind when you hear these incidents happening with such regularity? Okay, I will respond to this not as a director legal of IJM Chennai, but as a founder of uh, VC, which is an NGO catering to women subject to violence and uh, children. See, um, as far as this case is considered, it would amount to corporal uh, punishment. But corporal amount uh, punishment in uh, uh, as far as the act goes, mm. it is uh, uh, under the uh, under the Article 17 states that no child shall be subjected to um, um, physical or mental abuse, and this will fall under the uh, act that goes. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm just all right. Yeah, yeah, that's an important point you made. Let's also go back to Mr. Sailendra Babu sir. Now there are reports that there was previous enmity between the teacher and the deceased student, were there any complaints really pending, filed by each other uh, against either the teacher or the student? Our investigation reveals that the boy has not done his homework. Therefore, uh, the teacher got upset over this and he has, um, I mean, he has slapped the boy first, then pushed him down in the fit of anger. And with that, the boy developed uh, fits and he subsequently was taken to the hospital where he died. All right. Now, is the post-mortem report out uh, just yet, sir? It happened uh, in the morning, we're told. And if, if so, what does it say? Uh, post-mortem report is still awaited, but uh, there wasn't much of uh, external injury 
uh, on the body of the boy. But then uh, in due course, when we get the report, uh, we will be able to confirm. All right, Mr. Babu, now how will the police really act on complaints of corporal punishment? We know it's a crime. We know there are, there are a slew of laws to deal with this. But how would you actually view such cases? Because in many cases, you go to police stations, at least this is what parents or students tell us, they, they in fact uh, uh, accuse the, the complainants of, try, of trivializing the whole issue. A corporal punishment will be taken as uh, a criminal act and as such uh, complaint from the student will be taken cognizance and it will be treated like an assault only maybe many day, years before when teachers assaulted or um, you know corporal punishment was given it was accepted but today many parents do not accept this and students also do not accept it and when there is a visible injury mostly parents they come to the police sometimes they go to the institution and give a complaint when a complaint is lodged uh, police have to take cognizance, investigate the matter and take action against the teacher. All right, uh, if I can bring in Mrs. Annie Mohan here again. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you know, there was a rule, an archaic rule, Rule 51 called the Tamil Nadu Educational Rules, which actually sanctioned corporal punishment up to six cuts on the hand, either administered by the headmaster or under the supervision of the headmaster for insubordination, for delinquency. Something as archaic as that, only a few years ago it was overturned. Do you think this is one reason which actually emboldens teachers to practice corporal punishment? That at one point it was sanctioned by the law. Uh, I really don't think so, Sanjay, because uh, whatever the law is, a child cannot be uh, punished. A child cannot be punished uh, uh, physically and verbally. That's for sure. So this type of a training should be given to teachers where they are aware of the consequences of corporal punishment. Definitely, even when a criminal who is kept under uh, lawfully under police custody is not supposed to be, uh, you know, ill-treated and uh, hit or uh, abused, and how can a little child uh, from the age of five to fifteen or eighteen? can be punished in schools and colleges. It's uh, against all laws, whatever the old archaic laws were. I totally feel that we should, it's time we all put our inputs together and uh, made some arrangements to train teachers to give them the awareness of the consequences of corporal punishment. Ma'am, do you have corporal and punishment uh, in your school? They say that oh, in most schools. Uh, you have corporal definitely punishment in some no, form of the other, even if it's no. not uh, the beating them, no. making them kneel down on the floor, standing in the hot sun, uh, no, made to no, run five no. rounds, you know, about no. uh, two kilometers uh, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. There are various other forms <laughs> no. of corporal punishment. No, Sanjay, that's not done in Vidyodaya or I don't think it's done in any of the city schools. But maybe... Oh, you'll be surprised. I know of schools, ma'am, where they throw the dusters at the children. Areas. I know of schools where they fling dusters at the children for not answering <laughs> questions correctly. Definitely not in Vidyodaya. Not in Vidyodaya, definitely okay. Definitely not in Vidyodaya. All right. But uh, definitely. All right, uh, let me ask Anu George. I mean, there are, they throw dusters at children. They use two scales and beat them on their knuckles. The, the child is asked to actually, you know, hold out, uh, clench the fist, and they beat the children on the knuckles. There are third degree methods. Sometimes certain schools actually function like concentration camps. The children are terrified to go to school. Yes, I mean, we need to look at corporal uh, punishments in a different way altogether. Is it only inflicting injury or is it inflicting pain? There are conventional ways to, uh, people have conventionally thought that uh, children react. Uh, reactions are quite similar to that of am uh, animals, to stimuli, uh, meaning certain actions will amount to certain pain. So it need not necessarily be just inflicting pain physically. It could be anything. I mean, I've heard of punishments where uh, uh, children of opposite gender were asked to slap or, you know, even having uh, sticky notes which says, I'm an idiot or a donkey and walking around in schools. But I haven't seen that so myself. I've heard quite a bit of it. Of it isn't good. All right. Uh, final question to Mr. Babu, sir. Now, there are different situations. Are there really different situations where the victims or their parents should either complain to the principal or go to the police? Yeah, the parents or sometimes uh, the student himself uh, approach either the head of the institution or sometimes the police or sometimes both. But in our case, when a complaint is lodged either by the student or the parent, we should take cognizance immediately 
and we should investigate and find out the truth. Based on the truth, we take action. Sometimes, of course, the head of the institution might give a forward the complaint to us, in which case also the same procedure would follow. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Sailendra Babu, for joining us. We know you have to go off for a meeting, but we really appreciate your time for coming on the show on this important subject of corporal punishment. Thank you very much indeed. Let's also go across to Henry Trifain, who's the executive director and the founder of People's Watch based in Madurai. Now, Henry, especially in certain rural schools, we are told that it doesn't really, the spotlight is not thrown there, and a lot of teachers actually manage to go scot-free. How rampant is it, particularly in the districts? Well, uh, I should, uh, as, uh, as someone who now visits uh, more and more schools in person, uh, I'm, I'm very shocked by what, I, what I've heard in this case. But uh, I'm extremely sad to say that this is what we see in many schools across the state in Tamil Nadu. Uh, Mr. Henry, do you believe that this is sort of a, a hangover of, you know, that, that earlier that old archaic law, that it was once sanctioned and therefore, although it may have been scrapped, many teachers perhaps are not aware that it's been scrapped or perhaps are just, they don't really care? Well, uh, uh, I don't think we, we can enter into the past. The 2009 Right to Education Act under Section 17 categorically prohibits physical and mental punishment to children. And that's it. And the second part of that provision makes it clear that disciplinary action has to be initiated against teachers who indulge in such practices. And I should say that um, more and more we find uh, the government schools falling in line. And I think it is uh, more and more private schools which need to start behaving themselves. All right, uh, uh, Mrs. Annie Mohan, uh, the, the human rights activists, they're saying that uh, it's the government schools which actually follow the, law, the laws and it's only these so-called private schools, uh, the elite uh, schools in the cities which actually practice uh, corporal punishment. Do you want to take him on there? Uh, I don't think uh, any of the city schools uh, will do that. Because uh, there are a lot, there is a lot of awareness uh, nowadays, and uh, we have uh, time and again proved that children, 98% of them, would respond to compassion and uh, love, and we can mentor them, and definitely we can help them. But whenever a thing, a, a child uh, doesn't do the homework or is a habitual latecomer or things like that, we have to find out the root cause and help the child. So understanding and respect uh, between teachers and children is but a... Why, but why uh, give them homework in the first place?